pop quiz. You're playing a six max cash game and you're in the low jack and look down at 10 of diamonds, queen of clubs. You roll high, so you decide to open 2.25x and the big blind calls. Assuming the big blind checks to you, should your c betting strategy be similar on these two boards? The answer is that the optimal c betting strategies on these boards are actually very different. In fact, 10 of diamonds, queen of clubs specifically, is bet nearly 100% of the time on the ace, jack, six rainbow board and checked nearly 100% of the time on the ace, jack, five two-tone board. If you're interested to learn why this is, this video is for you. In poker strategy videos, you'll often hear people talk about range advantage as a critical factor in determining strategies. So what exactly is range advantage and why is it so important? Well, to start, we should probably define what a range is in the first place. Since each player is dealt two cards face down that the other players cannot see, poker is known as a game of incomplete information. This means that in the vast majority of cases, we don't exactly know where our cards rank relative to our opponents. However, we still need to make betting and calling slash folding decisions based on our probability of winning the pot. So the logical way to address this dilemma is by assigning certain cards to our opponent that he's likely to have based on his prior actions, which is referred to as range construction. Right, initially everyone has an equal probability of receiving all of the 1,326 potential hand combinations in the deck, but once players start to take actions, we can make rational judgments about the types of hands the player should or should not have based on such actions. For example, I recently played a test hand in a 6 max cash game where I was the cutoff and opened with 6s, my opponent on the button 3 bet, and I called. In this case, when the button 3 bet, he's signaling that he likely has a strong hand that doesn't mind playing for a large pot. In other words, unless he's Mike Possel, it's very unlikely that he's holding a hand with very poor equity like 7 deuce off so we can rationally remove some of these hands by process of elimination. The collection of all possible hands a player likely has at any given point is his range, and range advantage generally refers to a situation where one player likely has a greater percentage of stronger hands in his range than the other given the board texture. And we emphasize that the range advantage is determined by having a higher percentage of strong hands, not based on having a higher absolute number of strong hands. This is due to the fact that poker is a game of probabilities, so we want to know who has the higher likelihood of holding the best hand, which is determined by percentages and not absolute values. So going back to our example, the flop was 8-7-3 rainbow, I checked, he bet half pot and I called. The turn was a 5, I checked again, he bet 3 quarters pot and I called with the open ender. The river was a 9, completing my straight, and I shoved just over pot. Now at first glance, this may seem like a crazy donk shove, and I frankly wasn't sure if it was good at the time. But when I ran this hand through the solver, I was surprised to see that the solver actually shoves over one third of its range on this river. And the reason for this, primarily, is range advantage. After calling a 3 bet out of position, and calling two moderate to large bets on the flop and turn, most of the hands that I likely had in my range at this point were smashing this river, as we can see by the darker shade, whereas although the button also has strong hands here, he's quite broadway heavy, particularly with overpairs, so the probability of villain checking behind was likely quite high. So despite the fact that the button was the aggressor on all three streets prior and had a major advantage the whole way, due in large part to this single card on the river, the range advantage completely shifted in my favor, thereby warranting taking a very aggressive line. Right, if we take a look at the equity tiers, we see that over half my range has greater than 75% equity, and nearly one quarter of my range is comprised of straights. So in other words, range advantage can be thought of as a sort of barometer of how aggressive a player can be in a given spot in conjunction with other factors such as position and SPR. This is because when we have a range advantage, it means that the probability of us holding a stronger hand is increased, which in turn means that our opponent should be more likely to fold. Right, This column here shows the percentage of hands our opponent should be folding at the equilibrium to each of these bets, which is quite significant. And when our opponent is more prone to fold, this gives our bluffs and on earlier streets our protection bets a greater incentive to fire, 
which in turn provides cover for our value bets to play aggressively as well. So for example, if we isolate just the combos that are shoving with greater than 50% frequency, which we can do by clicking here, we see quite clearly how the solver is pairing its bluffs with its value bets in this spot. Right, we see the jack high straight and top set being flanked by these 9x bluffs. We see the 6x straights being flanked by these ace 5 and 5 4 bluffs. And finally, we have pocket 4s and pocket deuces, which are being turned into bluffs, likely due to the fact that they are unblocking some of the weaker made hands that Dylan is likely to fold, such as 9x and some overpairs. And unfortunately, in this case, after a long tank, our opponent did end up folding, so we'll never know what he had. So now that we have a general idea of what range advantage is, let's go back to revisit our pop quiz from the start of this video, where the Lojack had a c-betting decision on two ostensibly similar looking boards. One thing to note is that on both boards, the Lojack actually has a very significant advantage at the top of the range, but on the ace jack 5 two-tone board, the solver is doing a lot more checking. So why is this? Well, if we examine the lower equity tiers, although the in-position player does have an advantage throughout, the advantage is not as significant. And this is why you'll often see people break down range advantage into two categories, a nut advantage and a general equity advantage. A player has a nut advantage when he has the higher percentage of the very strongest hands, that will often want to get stacks in by the river. And a player has an equity advantage when he has a stronger range overall, usually including among lower tiered hands. On the flop, when the in position player has both the nut and equity advantage, the solver will often bet nearly its entire range with a small sizing, as we can see in this aggregated report showing the c-betting frequency for the low jack against the big blind across all possible flops. This small bet leverages the in-position player's advantage throughout the range, which will often be on very dry boards, to obtain a greater percentage of folds for its bluffs and protection bets, since the big blind will typically have fewer hands that can continue on these boards even against a small bet. And since the aggressor's stronger hands do not want folds, they also have an incentive to bet small to induce calls. Thus, on these types of boards, most of the in-position player's weak, medium, and strong hands will often have the incentive to merge towards one small sizing. In contrast, when the in-position player has a nut advantage but not necessarily an equity advantage throughout the range, the solver may not range bet small because such a bet will not be as effective to fold out villain's plentiful moderate equity hands. So instead, the solver will often use relatively larger sizings in a more polarized manner. Additionally, on low connected boards, a greater proportion of the big blind range will have decent equity, which means more calling, and this in turn means the in position player's range advantage and fold leverage is diminished, resulting in more checking. So going back to our hand, the 5 instead of the 6 and the 2 tone board instead of the rainbow board provide the big blind with a number of decent equity hands that will not likely fold to a small bet as they have the ability to make strong hands on later streets. Specifically, the big blind has a number of wheel draws as well as flush draws that the in position player does not have, particularly since the ace and jack are suited, which blocks some of the in-position player's strongest flush draws and unblocks the out-of-position player's weaker flush draws. Accordingly, the out-of-position player's advantage with these draws increases its overall equity in the middle to lower portion of the range. This, coupled with the fact that ace-high boards tend to mitigate range advantage and also reduce the need for protection, result in a lot more checking on the ace-jack-5 two-tone board with a more polarized betting range. So that was a very high level summary of one of the most important concepts in poker, range advantage, which will often significantly influence how we should play our individual hands. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay bounced.